Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Injection Therapy Clinic. Um, we had a ton of great questions submitted um, for the live event, and we wanted to give everyone the chance to have their questions answered. So we're coming back to you today with a rapid fire Q&A. Um, the format for today is going to be uh, I asked questions to Dr. Perlman, and she will um, rapid fire answer these questions, one to two sentences per question. So without any further delay, let's get started. First question right, here. Challenge accepted, Austin. Let's do this. Yes, let's do it. All right, first question here. Do I need to be concerned by bruising on the side of the injection? You don't need to be concerned. Hold pressure in that area until the bleeding stops. The bruising will go away in a few days. What is the benefit of rotating the injection site from one side to the other? The hope is to limit the formation of scar tissue in that one area by spreading out where you do the injections. I generally inject with my right hand to the right side of the shaft midway. Sometimes it's a smooth and painless process. However, lately it's been harder to push the needle in to inject and it hurts. Why? That can happen if you develop scar tissue in that area, which is another reason why we suggest that you alternate sides. I have essential tremors in my hands. Is there an alternate way to administer the injection? An auto injector may help, but also if you have a partner or someone else who can do the injection for you, that would also be a great idea. I injected approximately six months with no noticeable progress. Is this normal? I am four years past my surgery and still no natural erection. It's not normal, but it can happen, and injections don't work for everybody. That's why we have other options, whether it's a vacuum erection device or a penile implant, and that's maybe you know where you're headed. What are the long-term effects as it concerns scar tissue in increased doses after prolonged use? So there is known risk for scar tissue development with penile injection therapy, and that's one of the reasons why over time the injections may not work as well because of the development of scar tissue. So it is a known risk because of that medication called papaverin, which is in Trimix and Bimix. How long can the medication stay in the refrigerator before it expires? The expiration day uh, says 60 days, but I've heard you can keep it and use it longer than that. I don't know any patients who have died from using expired Trimix, but the recommendation is always to follow whatever is on the bottle in terms of expiration date. What are the reasons for limiting Trimix injections to every other day or three times per week? To reduce risk of scar tissue formation. Which of the three chemicals in Trimix creates a firmer erection? The papaverin and alprostadil uh, create the erection. The fentolamine turns off the off switch of that erection going away. Do antihistamines help reduce an erection if it's been going on for more than four hours? If the erection's been going on for more than four hours, we do recommend that you go to the emergency room for that. You can try an antihistamine if you're going on like maybe the two, three hour mark, but once you're at the four hours, that's really a trip to the ER. I keep on missing the injection site. Do you have any tips to help me hit the mark in the future? I would try using either a handheld mirror, or just stand in front of a standing mirror to help you see that area better. Bimix doesn't work for me, but Trimix does. Only problem is that I get a pain or pressure from using Trimix. Why? I was recommended to switch to Bimix, but it doesn't work as well. What should I do? The difference between those two formulations is that Trimix also contains a third medication called alprostadil, and the alprostadil is what causes that dull ache in the penis. So you can either you know, go down with a Trimix formulation, you can go down with a lower dose of the alprostadil as long as there's something still in there, and that may work better for you. I've been using injection therapy for three years. Effective, effectiveness has continued to decrease. Why? That can be from the development of scar tissue. But also, if you have other comorbid conditions, high blood pressure, diabetes, if those aren't well controlled, then all of those things will also contribute to worsening erectile function over time. What is the success rate of this treatment? Are there some that can't be helped? The injections work in a lot of people, but just like the pills, they don't work in everybody. And that's why we have a penile implant option. So we can put penile implants in those for whom injections either don't work or are intolerable. When is the peak effect reached after injection and is Trimix the best injectable available or are others just as effective? 
there's no evidence to say that one injectable medication works better than another. Unfortunately, for penile injections, it's a little bit of trial and error. In terms of, let's see, what was the first part of that question? When is the peak effect reached? Oh, and we usually tell people to do it about 10 to 15 minutes before sexual activity. It doesn't quite take as long as the pills to take effect. Can injection therapy work with Lupron therapy? It can. A Lupron really lowers your testosterone down to nothing. And so it's, it can be difficult to get an erection when your testosterone level is still low, but it still can work with men who are on hormone therapy. Using Trimix now, is there anything stronger I should know about? No, as I briefly mentioned before, there's no evidence to say that one necessarily works better than another. With your current trimix, you might need to go up on the dose depending on the formulation or even change around the amounts of each of those three medications that are in that vial. I'm afraid to start right now, injection therapy that is, because if something goes wrong and I need to go to the emergency room, I don't wanna be subjected to a hospital environment. Should this be a worry? Great question. And that's why we recommend that you start at a really low dose and slowly work your way up. You don't want to put a lot of medication in there because then you will need to go to the ER. So I would say, yes, it, it can be a worry. It doesn't have to change management. If you start at a really low dose and slowly work your way up, then you should not have a problem. Can Trimix be frozen for weeks in the freezer, thawed, use a little, then put back in the freezer to prolong shelf life? Yes, but keep keep paying attention to that expiration date. Should you divide the injection dose in half and inject half on the right side and half on the left side? No need to do that. The erectile bodies are actually connected in the middle by a thin septum, and so the medication that you put on one side will get delivered to the other side. If injection increases size but not rigidity, should the prescription be changed or refined? Yes, it should. I injected Trimix three times. Each time I, my erection was not hard and my penis got bigger, but not hard. Would a stronger dose help? Yeah, it may, or a different formulation, or using the injections in combination with other therapies, like a vacuum erection device, for example. What would be the reason for the penis turning blue after an injection, and is it a problem? So that can happen if you get a blood vessel with the injection, and so that can cause kind of bruising all around the penis. Also, if you're using it in combination with a vacuum erection device, that vacuum pump pulls venous blood into the penis, which can make the penis look a little bit blue and a little bit chilly. Are you aware of, and do you have an opinion on, wave vibration therapy? So wave vibration therapy or low intensity shockwave therapy is still considered investigational. So it's not FDA approved for the indication. Does it hurt anyone? No. Does it help? We don't know yet. What would cause local swelling, discoloration the day after injections? That can be from hitting a blood vessel and that bruising can get this weird sort of yellowish, purplish, bluish uh, vibe to it. So that'll go away in a few days. It's okay if you hit a blood vessel. It's just, um, you gotta hold pressure there until it goes away, but that can even show up the day after. Should I do injections three to four times per week as prescribed, even if I'm not having sexual relations, I had my prostate removed? I'm a firm believer that getting guys erections as often as possible, as good of erections as possible, especially after prostate treatment, is really important for the overall health of the tissue. It's kind of like a catch-22. The injection therapy can cause some scar tissue, but we see guys who haven't had good erections for five, 10 years, when, we re when they regain erections, they, the tissue changes and it's not as stretchy as it used to be. So I do recommend that, you know, whatever you need to do to get good erections, even if it's, if it's with the penile injection therapy is a good idea. And you don't have to use it for intercourse. Monday, Wednesday, Friday is just fine. Injections have always been very painful for me. How deep must the injection be? Is uneven blood retention normal? You should hub the needle with the injection. And I've had patients say that when they use the vacuum erection device before injecting the medication, it allows for more even spread of the medication and a more even erection. Is there a way to use Trimix with the presence of hard spots or plaques on the penis? You can, but it's gonna, it's gonna be a little bit risky. So typically when guys come in and they're already having significant scar tissue or even penile curvature, at that point, we usually move to a penile implant. Please explain the side effect of hypotension with injection therapy. My husband is on Eligard 
Clomax, and Losartan. He is lightheaded with BP drop right after injection. He has had radiation treatment for prostate cancer. Usually the medication with the injectables go directly into the penis and stay there. But if you're someone who has significant venous leak where those veins drain too early into your body, then that medication can drain back into your body and cause hypotension. All right. And that was the last question in the rapid fire Q&A. Thank awesome. you so much for joining us again on your vacation. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Austin.